On a cold morning in March 2025, the team at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center watched their screens the way people watch a storm move toward a coastline, aware that something huge was happening but not yet knowing what shape it would take. The James Webb Space Telescope, built to stare into the ancient dark and read the first pages of the universe, had been turned toward a target no one expected it to chase, an interstellar object designated 3i Atlas the third confirmed visitor from beyond our solar system. Atlas had first been noticed back in September 2024 by the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System in Hawaii, a tireless array of automated telescopes that sweeps the sky for near-Earth hazards. At first glance, the object looked ordinary, a faint blur sliding across Virgo, but the math refused to behave. Its path was hyperbolic, unbound to the sun which meant it had arrived from the gulf between stars and would return there once it finished crossing our neighborhood. The International Astronomical Union soon confirmed the orbital solution and stamped it 3i slash Atlas, placing it in the same rare category as Oumuamua in 2017 and Comet Borisov in 2019, but almost immediately it became clear this newcomer was built from stranger stuff. Where Oumuamua had been a lopsided, tumbling Riddle and Borisov, a comfortably familiar comet. Atlas carried contradictions. Spectra hinted at an iron-nickel-rich body like an M-type asteroid, possibly threaded with platinum group metals, yet also wore a faint coma, a ghost of gas, and dust more typical of icy comets. That haze wasn't neutral white either. It glowed faintly blue, implicating carbon monoxide and maybe complex organics, as if the object had wandered through multiple chemical climates before reaching us. Its origin trace pointed toward Lyra, roughly 30 light years away, a region dotted with old stellar remnants, white dwarfs and neutron stars, the cooling embers of systems that once had planets. Some researchers pictured Atlas as debris from a long-ago planetary collision or a supernova's violent sweep a shard thrown into interstellar night millions of years before humans learned to look up. But even that narrative didn't fully fit, because Atlas rotated like a metronome, not a tossed stone. Every 11.7 hours, it completed a single steady spin around one axis, stable enough to make seasoned dynamicists uneasy. Objects ejected chaotically from dying systems usually tumble unpredictably, and stable rotation can happen naturally, yes but it's rare enough to raise eyebrows when paired with everything else. The orbital geometry deepened the intrigue. Atlas dropped in from above the ecliptic, arced through the inner solar system, and headed back out again on a trajectory that would skim Mars by about 8 million kilometers, close in cosmic terms, less than half the minimum Earth-Mars distance. No interstellar object had ever been caught passing so near another planet. No probe, not Voyager, Cassini, or even Hubble in its decades of vigilance, had recorded such a planetary encounter. Webb, sitting at the Sun, Earth L2 Lagrange point with a clear view of the inner system, had the best seat anyone could ask for, and on March 17, 2025 at 1422 Universal Time coordinated, its guidance system locked on and began doing something it was never designed to do. Webb's instruments are optimized for faint, distant, nearly motionless galaxies and exoplanets, not for tracking a fast intruder ripping past a nearby world at tens of kilometers per second. Following Atlas at roughly 58 kilometers per second required improvisation bordering on audacity. Engineers uploaded new pointing commands every six minutes, effectively teaching the telescope to chase a speeding bullet across a field of stars. The reaction wheels, those silent spinning gyros that nudge Webb's enormous mirrors by fractions of a degree, worked overtime, making micro-corrections to hold the interstellar target in frame, and to everyone's relief, it paid off. The first processed images showed Atlas as a stretched luminous streak against blackness. Mars a rusty coin in the corner, but as NIR cam and Miri dissected the light, the data began to till from surprising into outright uncanny. Alice wasn't just reflecting sunlight, it was emitting. Miri's thermal readouts revealed localized hotspots on the surface, 
brighter and warmer than models predicted for an object at that distance from the sun, and those hot spots pulsed rhythmically, brightening and dimming every few seconds like a heartbeat. Meanwhile, infrared frames showed filament-like threads trailing behind Atlas for hundreds of thousands of kilometers, delicate ribbons of ionized gas that looked less like a normal comet tail and more like a structured wake. As Atlas crossed Mars's orbital path, those filaments reacted to the planet's weak, patchy magnetosphere, bending, twisting, and briefly forming spiral patterns that clung to invisible magnetic field lines. Engineers and scientists watched in the kind of silence that isn't empty but crowded with focus. Preliminary calculations had expected Atlas to approach Mars at around 54 kilometers per second, yet Webb measured 58, faster than predicted, and accelerating as it left the encounter as if something unseen were pushing it outward or pulling it toward the void. The trail behind it shimmered in infrared, a contrail of ionized particles that responded to solar wind like smoke moving underwater, fluid, organized, almost alive. For 17 minutes, Webb held the lock and captured more than 200 frames across multiple wavelengths, enough material to keep analysts busy for years, but certain impressions landed immediately. One was aesthetic. The filaments were breathtaking. Another was physical. They shouldn't have behaved that way if Atlas were just a dirty snowball or metal-rich rock bleeding gas. The spectroscopic fingerprints added to the unease. Webb detected absorption lines for compounds that don't normally coexist. Crystalline silicates with polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Water ice paired with metallic vapor suggesting Atlas carried material forged in high heat alongside organics that survive only in extreme cold. It looked less like a coherent birth object and more like a stitched collage of environments. Asteroid core, comet nucleus, planetary crust, protostellar disk, all pressed into one traveler. Then, almost as quickly as it came, the flyby ended. Atlas shot past Mars's magnetic influence, raced outward toward the heliopause, and left behind a fading ion trail that dissipated within hours, but had already imprinted itself on another world. In the wake of the encounter, Webb recorded unusual auroral activity over Mars's northern pole, ultraviolet curtains forming where Martian auroras don't typically appear. The patterns implied an influx of charged particles unlike the usual solar wind, raising the possibility that Atlas had shed interstellar dust during its close approach and seeded Mars's upper atmosphere with matter from another star system. Emmanuel Behar of the European Space Agency described the moment as unprecedented. For a short time, the charged wake appeared to enhance Mars's magnetosphere, creating temporary magnetic pockets that funneled solar wind into the atmosphere and lit the planet up in places that should have stayed dark. From Webb's perspective, Mars itself seemed to shimmer, as if the red planet had been briefly switched on by alien electricity. Even more startling were trace compounds Webb detected in the upper atmosphere, molecules with isotope ratios that did not match Mars or anything else known in the solar system. If those readings held up, they were literal interstellar contamination, proof that material formed around another star had mixed with the atmosphere of a planet humans hoped to walk on in the next century. NASA's Mars Exploration Program immediately looped in rover and orbiter teams. Perseverance, Curiosity, Maven, to see if any lingering changes could be measured from below, but even before those cross-checks arrived, everyone understood the philosophical weight of what had happened. An interstellar object hadn't just passed through, it had interacted, left traces, and changed a planetary environment in measurable ways. Within six hours, NASA convened an emergency virtual briefing with scientists from Goddard, ESA, JAXA, and JPL. The mood was electric, but careful, the way it gets when data outruns theory. Stephanie Milam summarized the central problem bluntly. The chemical profile implied formation conditions that shouldn't coexist. Metallic compounds that require high-temperature forging sat alongside fragile organics that only endure in deep freeze. The object, as observed, shouldn't exist. Every new plot seemed to contradict the one before it. Stable rotation argued for a solid, coherent body, but hotspots 
and outgassing argued for active volatile release. Reflectivity behaved like an M-type asteroid, but spectra carried signatures of outer protostellar disks. Behar floated a controversial thought, not as a leap to aliens, but as a demand for thoroughness. Perhaps Atlas wasn't entirely natural. The geometric steadiness of its spin, rhythmic thermal pulses, and the way its wake appeared to activate near Mars were hard to ignore. Thomas Zerbichin pushed back with veteran caution, reminding everyone how easily humans chase intention and randomness, and how Oumuamua had traveled the same gauntlet from sensational speculation toward more mundane possibilities. A stable rotation might simply be an accident of ejection. Anomalous heating might have multiple natural causes. Trajectories that skim planets are statistically inevitable in a system with eight large targets. Extraordinary claims, he insisted, require extraordinary evidence. And at that moment, evidence still exceeded understanding, but not reality. While the scientists fenced carefully, the public sprinted ahead. Webb's images leaked through enthusiasts with access to raw data feeds and spread online within hours enhanced and false-colored into mesmerizing portraits of a glowing visitor threading Mars's orbit. Social media lit up with hashtags. Hashtag Atlas Flyby. Hashtag Mars Visitor. Hashtag Web Sees All. While amateur analysts drew arrows on screenshots and argued over every filament curve. Documentaries were commissioned before peer review could catch its breath. Some people saw an alien probe. Others saw a weird but natural comet. Most simply felt the shared thrill of witnessing something new and too large for easy storytelling. Out of that noise, three main explanatory camps crystallized inside the scientific conversation. The conservative model treated Atlas as an unusual hybrid comet born in a heavy element-rich environment. A metal-loaded icy body whose stable rotation was not impossible whose hotspots were due to volatile sublimation and uneven solar heating, and whose strange spectral suite reflected a chemistry different from ours, but still within the spectrum of natural planetary formation. It was the tidy choice, the one that preserved physics as we know it, but it left nagging loose ends, especially the rhythmic pulsing and the organized magnetospheric response. The second camp entertained partial artificiality, not because anyone wanted to shout, aliens, but because some patterns resembled technology more than geology. If an object rotated with deliberate stabilization, emitted periodic thermal spikes, potentially consistent with internal power sources or decay heat, and brightened as if responding to environmental triggers near Mars, then at minimum the hypothesis deserved to be tested rather than laughed away. Supporters also noted that Atlas's inbound and outbound path passed relatively close to multiple planets in a sequence that could be read, dangerously, perhaps, like a survey route. The skeptics in this camp were quick to underline how treacherous that reasoning is. In a crowded system, almost any hyperbolic track will pass near something, and our brains are built to pull meaning from coincidence. The third, more exotic camp went further and proposed that the object might be made of matter that didn't originate in normal space-time, or at least not in the regimes that shaped our solar system. They pointed to electromagnetic behavior around the wake that seemed inconsistent with standard comet, solar wind interactions, and to claims of fleeting gravitational lensing anomalies suggesting local space-time, bending not easily explained by mass alone. Some even speculated about debris from a black hole merger or relic exotic matter from the early universe, improbably preserved inside a solid traveler. This idea lived at the fringe because it invoked physics never directly observed, made predictions hard to test, and asked mainstream researchers to step into uncomfortable territory, but offered a single umbrella under which all the contradictions could coexist. Webb, indifferent to debates, kept watching as Atlas faded outward, in the final data series, another detail appeared. Faint infrared pulses repeating on the same 11.7-hour cycle as the rotation, subtle enough to admit multiple interpretations, yet regular enough to make people lean forward. Signal or surface process, artifact or clue, it became another line in the growing list of too neat to ignore 
too early to declare. Whatever Atlas was, it had delivered interstellar science out of the realm of theory and into the realm of interaction. For the first time, astronomers held multi-wavelength documentation of an extrasolar object colliding not with a planet, but with a living magnetic and atmospheric environment, giving them a laboratory no human could have built. Isotopic traces in Atlas's composition included neutron counts not known to occur naturally in our solar system, implying nucleosynthesis around a different kind of star or in the debris of a supernova. That alone confirmed a long-held suspicion that interstellar matter can carry fundamentally different chemical fingerprints, meaning our own solar system's composition is provincial rather